Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna check out this awesome animation from Burn V Studio and today I'll show you how to create this animation straight into After Effects. So as always, no time to waste, let's jump into After Effects and let's go. So to start we create a new composition. We name it arbitrarily. Size 1920 by 1080 and duration 10 seconds. We create a new solid. Right click, also name it arbitrarily. For me it will be BG. We add the four color. Gradient effect to it. We set the colors to be approximately light with two colors. In short, mine will be white and two colors will have a light purple tint. We position them arbitrarily and in position in point, we write wiggle. The first value is the frequency and the second value is the distance the color animation will move. And we inserted this expression into all the positions of the four colors. We write the first text. For me, it will be motion RAM. The font is like Apple's SF Pro. The width is approximately minus 50. It looks okay. I center it, of course, using a line to make everything beautifully centered. And around the second second, I press Ctrl D, split it into two parts, and write a different text for the other part for the other slide. We will also center everything, the anchor point itself, and I create a shape we will create from the shape it will be a rectangle but we also need to set guides so as not to include this grid I forgot what it's called we will set guides to roughly see where the edges of our screen are so as not to go too far and to have an approximate imaginary, well, in short, to have such imaginary edges. I will also write another small text on top, also motion RAM. You will understand later what this is for. For now, I will place it at the top left, but I think I will adjust its position a bit later. Also, now the created rectangle, this will be the first rectangle for the animate text. Um, I'll insert animate approximately in the position of our rectangle. You can simply copy with Ctrl plus C and paste into the text. It will of course be positioned uh, in the same place as uh, the rectangle. I'll set up some guides for myself as we will have two lines of text above and below. I'll set up some guides for myself. Um, you could say also imaginary lines uh, approximately to orient myself on where the first and second parts of my design will be located. Now actually I need to make a proper rectangle according to the size of the text, well, sort of a bit larger. Uh, I usually have a few, but they are placed, well, you could say by eye. I'll roughly draw it. This is the kind of rectangle I'll have. And there, where I've already decided that my first and second parts of these imaginary text lines will be located, that's actually where I place them at the start. I'll duplicate this rectangle with text and place it on the right. The second text will be like Kurtza and the full text will be animate like studio burn v or something like that. So basically I slightly reduce uh, the rectangle so that it has approximately 
the same margins as the first text in the rectangle, but it's not necessarily there. It's not very noticeable in principle, so you can leave it almost similar. And I'll make the color butts of this rectangle be approximately like my gradient, but a little darker to ensure contrast in case the text blends in. So basically, now the text is visible, the gradient, oh, the background's position has changed a bit and it seems to blend in slightly. To ensure there's still a difference, the text needs to be made a bit darker. The third text as mentioned will be studio. I am also changing the size of the rectangle itself. I will also arrange everything, align everything so that everything is neat. And I will position it on the left side already on the second guide here. The text has shifted a bit due to the guide, it needs to be adjusted. So this is the second text. Oh, more precisely, the third text and the fourth text are actually the name of the studio on, in which I took this design from Tikoi, for which I am very grateful to him. We came up with a cool animation design. Here, I am showing you how to do it all. Also, I'll position it uh, a bit more to the right, and the distance between the rectangle of the first part, the upper part, and the second lower part should be approximately the same. Um, and the distance between the first part and the second part should also be approximately similar to the distance with the text motion ram so that everything looks more or less normal. I will also ah, select all, of course select all these elements and align them overall down the screen so that the entire picture is approximately centered. Also to highlight this First, large text, a gradient, needs to be added. I'll position it approximately like this. I will also change the colors. I'll change the colors to something uh, um, stylish, but also contrasting so that it stands out. And with this, well, there would be such an emphasis. And you can actually insert it there if it's going to be a real design. I don't know, for some project. This is just a great feature to highlight some text to emphasize something. So, if you want to emphasize something, you can just change the text color to another and give it a rectangle type of background with some colorful shade. I will also e uh, animate the gradients in the same way using wiggle. But here we have a small rectangle, here. My values were approximately around a thousand. Here the rectangle is small, so the values will be around 200, 300, 400. But you also need to change the first value so that uh, all the colors move in unevenly. This will create a much more interesting gradient animation. Um, the next step will be to create a stroke. We duplicate the rectangle and add a stroke. And the color, I think I'll take the contrasting orange we have. We need to copy the exact color from our rectangle so that um, the colors more or less match. That would be cool. Maybe, maybe I'll choose a different color. And uh, for the other rectangles, I'll duplicate it. The same way, add a stroke, remove the fill, so it doesn't bother us. And, but here the color will be white, and the stroke size for all three rectangles will be three. Three in principle, looks um, stylish, like not too big, and not too small. This also, I think, comes from experience over time. You develop a certain visual sense and generally understand well, what size is needed. Also, uh, next, to create such a highlight, you can duplicate this stroke and add a Gaussian blur to it and 
perform a trick like increasing the stroke. Because if the stroke is 3, it won't be visible as any kind of glow. Now you can see that there is a glow. So you need to slightly increase the stroke. For me this will be a value of 8. And actually perform the same manipulation for the next 3. Or rather 2 rectangles where we have the stroke for highlighting. But I don't really like this orange color. Still we should choose another color like purple, blue, something like that. It will fit better into the overall picture, I think. If not, you can write in the comments uh, that it's crap and I won't do it like this anymore. Maybe. So let's move on to the first part. Here we have plain text. Let's add a typewriter effect to it and the animation graphics will be 85. Just a simple typewriter animation like text appearing through opacity and we will transition this text to our second slide. So I roughly estimated with guides where I will move this text. I want to animate it by position as if it will move up to the left. Let's set the first keyframe. The duration of the animation, I usually set the timing uh, to 1 second and 10 frames. That's quite a good timing. And on the second frame, I move the text up to the left like this. Uh-huh, we'll see what comes out of this. The animation timing is of course 85. This is quite an optimal animation timing. So it's not too fast and not too slow. I place it right at the highest point to get a cool match cut. So far, this is uh, the movement we're getting. And then I attach uh, all three parts to the main text, meaning the rectangle stroke, rectangle evidence, and I attach it to the text because we will be animating the text itself to make it easier. And so, roughly speaking, it's divided into three parts. Motion RAM, then these two texts with uh, a rectangle and the next two texts with a rectangle like this I can pronounce it and we animate them by position also the timing the duration of the animation more precisely will be uh, one second 10 frames these will be oh and we'll also link our second text like link it to animate and burn the vbs link it to studio so everything is neat and essentially we'll only need to animate three text three these three layers this is the animation we get and we need to make a small offset to make it more interesting uh, since there are different numbers of these layers we need to do this manually just move them i think uh, by about two frames and two frames should be enough so each animation is two frames yes in principle it's cool and you need to find approximately the middle mm. but it will be cool i think when it will be in the mid well Yes, somewhere approximately in the middle of the entire overall animation. That is approximately so that these second keys are on the word animate. Right in the middle of this animation. So it will be because the third animation on studio is a bit too far. And on motion ram it's too close. So it will be great on the second text to cut it right in the middle. And a little bit, I see, we need to move the first motion ramp text slightly higher, mm. to the left, because the animation is too, too, too weak. It needs to be placed a bit higher. And here's what we get. It's already uh, indeed turning out rather well. Yes. Mm. 
Let's make it a bit more dynamic so that our typewriter effect writes a bit faster with more overlap on the position animation. This looks more dynamic to me. Like this. Yes, and um, I don't like that um, the text motion ram, this first one, doesn't reach the second motion ram. So I've extended it a bit and it needs to reach at the breaking point, um, the text should reach even more precisely. It should slightly overlap the second motion ram. This will be like a deceptive maneuver, as if our text flies into the other text and transforms into that text. And four, more dynamics and a greater deceptive maneuver will also animate by scale. That is, it will fly into the second text and shrink. And then at the moment of the match, it simply cuts off as if it uh, flies into that text and transforms into it. That's the trick for you today. Oh, and also for um, the first text, let's additionally add animation for the position. So we'll add a null and animate it from left to right. You'll understand why later. The duration of the animation should be the same as the animators, so everything is smooth as well. Well, I like how it's turning out right now. And also, since I won't be doing further animation, we can essentially transition into another animation, but I'll transition back to my own, like to my first slide. It will be kind of, you could say, looped a bit. So now I need to animate my second slide. And since I already have an animation, yes, I'll add null objects um, to avoid disrupting this animation and simply some add an additional position uh, to the animation. As I mentioned, I have it divided into three parts. The first part is motion ram, then the second part is the next two texts and two rectangles, and the third part is another two texts and two rectangles. I will animate in these segments because there are quite a lot of elements. To avoid overloading the animation, it will be like this and like this. Here I have E. I added three null objects and I'm giving them a small offset. Also about two frames. And also so that the first animation by position overlaps with the second animation by position. And I just shift animate to the left. This is approximately how the animation turns out. And approximately here I also find the middle on the second on the second middle animation. I press the N key so that at this moment the animation essentially ends on the timeline. And I also find approximately the middle on the first part. And this is essentially uh, what I get. It results in such a dynamic Animation, we tweak it a bit, mm. trim it slightly to make it uh, even more dynamic, like on one keyframe, uh, but I don't know, I just feel it. In short, I want to trim it by one keyframe, and this is what we end up with. And friends, that's all for today. As always, thank you, and uh, see you in the next video.